Dear students, what are the key points as far as malignant otitis externa is concerned? The first and foremost is Pseudomonas aeruginosa. This is the causative organism for malignant otitis externa. Apart from that, there can be fungal infections that is mucor and aspergillus which can produce malignant otitis externa. The second important point that we need to remember is it occurs most commonly in elderly, most commonly in diabetics. Let's not rule out immunocompromised in these situations as well. Any immunocompromised condition can produce malignant otitis externa. The third important point that you need to remember is it produces pain and discharge. It will usually be a purulent discharge that is arising from the external auditory canal and they will have extreme or severe pain which is more during the night time. The next important point that you need to remember in case of malignant otitis externa is there will be granulations in the external auditory canal at the bony cartilaginous junction, one of the key features of malignant otitis externa. When we talk about the cranial nerves that are most commonly affected, the seventh cranial nerve is most commonly affected in malignant otitis externa. When we talk about diagnosis of malignant otitis externa, what we need to remember is there is technetium 99M scan, which is the earliest to diagnose MOE. When we talk about CT and MRI with contrast, they help us to diagnose the extent of the disorder not to forget there is also an investigation called SPECT CT but if you look at CT and MRI they help us in diagnosing the extent of the disease and then we have one more investigation which is called as gallium scan this is to detect the efficacy of treatment so technetium 99m is the earliest to diagnose CT and MRI give us the extent of disease gallium scan gives us the efficacy of treatment for malignant otitis external. Last but not the least, when we talk about treatment, it is usually anti-pseudomonal antibiotics. When we talk about anti-pseudomonal antibiotics, the most often or most common anti-pseudomonal antibiotic that is given is a third generation cephalosporin with a fluoroquinolone. You can also give aminoglycosides in this condition.